Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of this Q&A series where I answer your questions, usually accompanied by a hot drink. Uh, <laughs> I say that and today I've got a, a rather tepid coffee. I've let it go cold, so, so much for that. But um, yeah, you give me questions and I answer them. Um, pretty simple. And I can just ramble on and on about all sorts. So uh, if you do feel like uh, submitting a question for this series, check the description box below. In there should be a link to a Google form. Put your question, put your name so I can credit you, and I'll answer it in an upcoming episode. Anyway, let's get on with the questions. Let's try and get loads done today and not blabber on for too long. The first question is from... Oh, no one actually. They didn't leave a name. But uh, the question is... Have you ever met Jay Sano in game or otherwise? Okay, well, let's get the more boring part of the. Well, not boring. Let's get the the less interesting part of that question out of the way first. Have I ever met Jeff Jay Sano in game? If you don't know who Jay Sano is, uh, Jay Sano is a mind cracker Minecraft player, and he is the J in the JFS, the Jay Sano fan server. I'm sure most of you know. Who Jay Sano is. Anyway, have I ever met him in game in Minecraft? Um, I feel like I should have over the years, but you know, I'm actually drawing a blank here. Maybe during a UHC? Well, did he join us? In no, he didn't do it. Uh, I know he did an episode with the Merry Gamer where he logged onto the server and built his statue in Jay Sano land. Was I online at that time? I don't think I was there, so no. Ooh, did I play some Calamity with him? Calamity is like a Minecraft um, uh, PvP multiplayer game. Uh, I don't... I feel like I have, but at the same time I feel like I haven't. So maybe I haven't, but... If that is the case and I haven't met him in game, so what? Because the more interesting part is, I've met him in real life. Yes, I have. Uh, I met him um, at Minecon. Well, not technically not at Minecon. I met him at the Mindcrack party that they had before Minecon in London back in July 2015. So uh, when I went with all the guys from the JFS like uh, Adrian, The Biggest Killer, Nakesa, Demultiplexer and his partner NWW, Pajam who was a moderator on the Mindcrack subreddit, all those guys, uh, we went to the Mindcrack party which was their own little thing they did before Minecon. And the venue they held it in had uh, table tennis tables. And I almost played table tennis with Jeff. He was there watching us with, a, with his beer. And um, I was playing Pajam. And I won because I'm great at, <laughs> at table tennis. Did I win? Yeah, I did. Because the winner, uh, since Jeff was watching, we were like, hey, okay, winner plays Jeff. And so I won. I was going to, but I... I don't know, I was a nice guy, I felt like I was hogging the table a bit, so I was like, you know what, killer, I can tell you want to play, so I'll let you play with Jeff. Um, so yeah, he did instead. I think he, he got smashed by Jeff. He was actually pretty good. Um, so yeah, I definitely have met and spoke briefly to him in real life. Don't know about um, playing with him in game though. But yeah, who cares? I was there at the Minecraft party, woo. Okay, so next question is from Billy Bob Joe. And it is, what is your favourite uh, car in the Simpsons Hit and Run? I think I recall you saying Malibu Stacy car or the car built for Homer years ago, but I don't know. P.S. Mine is Bart's Red Farini. Okay. My favourite car in the Simpsons Hit and Run. Bart's Red Farini is good. So is, um, I like a Pooh's car. Is it like the something horn? The long horn, maybe? But you're right, I think in that Let's Play, I said that the Malibu Stacy car is probably my favourite, just the way it looks and um, it drives really nicely and I don't know, I just have good things associated with uh, Lisa's level in that game. I just love Lisa's level. But um, the car built for Homer, that's also a very good call because mainly the, the, the horn is a really good, like a, how's it goes like, duh, 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 duh. I think the horn sounds like, it's good. Um, but also, another good horn in that game is the Vote Quimby vans, or trucks, they're more like. Uh, I think they're in Bart's level. I th well, I think they're in all the levels, actually. But when you press the horn in those, it goes, Vote Quimby, Vote Quimby, 
which I like as well. But I do think it is Malibu Stacy, with the car built for Homer, a close second. Uh, yeah, so you were you were spot on, Billy Bob Joe. Well done, good memory. Okay, thank you for the question. Let's move on to another one from Dennis Flux, and it is, <laughs> what does monkeys fear? Ooh, interesting. Not who does monkeys fear, but what does monkeys fear? Well, I'm sure monkeys fear a lot of things. Predators, dying. Do they have a concept of death? Probably. Uh, monkeys are quite clever. Uh, but what do they fear? The actual answer, if we're going by that game we played on the server, turkeys. <laughs> I remembered. They are scared of turkeys. No, wait, wait. Is that right? Or was it pigs? Or did you say pigs? Oh, I don't know. I think it was turkeys, though. Um, screw you, Dennis. Making me. I've actually got bad memory. Uh, okay, next question from uh, Larry. What is your Destroy All Humans 3 wish list? Weapons, locations, and time period. Okay, so good. We're, we're excluding Path of the Furon and Big Willy Unleashed. We're moving straight on to what would be the proper Destroy All Humans 3. Um, well, time period wise, I guess I've said in the past, it makes sense to go. It was like 50s in the first one, 60s. 70s ish in the second one. I think maybe 80s or 90s would be a good one for the, the third game. I mean, obviously, this is all hypothetical. That I doubt there's actually going to be a third game, but if there is, yeah, I think 80s, 90s would be a cool thing. I, I guess they kind of did 70s and 80s in the uh, in the other games, though, didn't they? The games that we don't really like to talk about. But let's just forget they exist altogether. They can do them again, they can do it better. Um, 90s especially I think because that's now getting to a stage where it was so long ago that you can like have some good sort of culture funny references and things like they did for the the 50s and 60s uh, yeah I, I think the 90s would be good I don't know what to do in terms of weapons oh god the weapons are so crazy in that game I don't think I could ever come up with anything close to that I do I tell you what they should add and this is just blatantly stealing from Ratchet and Clank but they should add the weapon in Ratchet and Clank that um, turns enemies into sheep or chicken, or is it both? I think it's sheep. They definitely, they definitely, they need some sort of weapon in Destroy Humans that changes humans into something, and not just a skeleton <laughs> when they die. Like some sort of creature. Does that exist already? Maybe it does. You tell me. Um, as for locations, oh. Where haven't they done? I think there's probably more places in America they could do. Maybe, um... So they've done Vegas, if you include Path of the Furon. Uh, they've done California, sort of. San Francisco-y. Um, New York? Have they done that sort of side, the East Coast? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anywhere else in the world, though? Hmm... Hmm. Anywhere else in the UK? I'm just being like greedy and selfish and want more things in the UK. Obviously, they have they've done Albion, which is London, but um, eh. Did they do France? They definitely did France in Path of the Furon. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm not sure, but I'd like it to be 80s or 90s, and yeah, I want to shoot people and turn them into sheep. All right? Is that too much to ask for? Anyway, um, the next question from Larry is, would you ever visit Australia or New Zealand? Absolutely. Oh yeah, I'd love to. The uh, only problem is, is that it's so far away for me, being in England. It's expensive, man. I think they, they only just started doing a direct flight from the UK to um, Australia. Usually you'd have to change uh, somewhere in like, I don't know, somewhere in Asia. But um, yeah. I'd love to go to Australia or New Zealand and actually there is a possibility of me going to New Zealand next December, so December of 2019 because my friend is getting married um, over there. His his fiance is from New Zealand and they want to get married in the lovely scenery they have over in that country, um, which obviously I've been invited to 
I don't know whether I'll be able to make it. I'd have to save up, that's for sure. But um, I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to. Uh, it's annoying because I'm going to a wedding in Canada in only a couple months' time <laughs> for another friend. So it's like, why can none of my friends get married in England? One of them's Canada. One of them's going to be New Zealand. Oh, boy. I hope they don't expect a wedding present after all this. My present would be my presence. Haha. -ha. Okay. Um, but yeah, I definitely would. That's for sure. Go to Australia or New Zealand. Okay, next question is from Beefcake Simulator. Which animated TV show do you consider to have the best or most memorable opening theme song? Ooh, animated TV show. Now, you know, the obvious answer to this is going to be something like The Simpsons, because... I love The Simpsons, and everyone knows The Simpsons theme tune. And but you know what? I don't. I don't think it is. Well, I, it might be, but for me, there is a more memorable opening theme song, and it's. I, I hum it all the time, and all you need to do is say like one word. Actually, you need to say one word, and you can just start to do the whole thing. Let me see. Let me test you guys. If I just say, "Hey." What's the rest of that? Do any of you know? Maybe? It's an animated TV show. It's an animated kids TV show. It's Arthur. I think Arthur definitely has a really memorable um, opening theme song. Which was actually sung by... Oh, what's his name? Um, Bob Marley. That was his name. Uh, Bob Marley's son, Ziggy Marley, actually sung that song. I'm definitely going to go with Arthur. Go listen to it now, it's so good. Okay, uh, next question is from Ben Busket Wells. Biscuit Wells, Busket? Okay. Oh, okay, I get why he's done that now. His question's about baking. I'm not sure if this is a fair question as it happened years ago, but I think I heard you say in multiple videos and streams that you're a fan of the Great British Baking Show. Uh, the Great British Bake Off, yeah. I think the title is slightly different over here than in the UK. Uh -huh. Do you have any thoughts on the Bait Alaska controversy of Season 1, also known as the Second Watergate? If you aren't familiar with this momentous event in broadcasting, do you bake? If so, what do you like to make? And when you bake, is it great? Moreover, is it British? Okay, another infamously long question there from Ben, uh, but I do like him. Uh, so no, I have no clue what you're referring to with the Baked Alaska controversy of Season 1. And that's because I didn't actually watch the show when it first came out. Um, I'm, I was quite a latecomer to the Great British Bake Off. But you're right, I do like it. Um, I only started watching maybe a, a couple years ago uh, when it really took off. But um, early on, no, I, I was not a fan. Uh, but do I bake? Yes, I do. I do like to bake. What do I like to make? Um, I usually like to go for uh, something quite simple, something quite easy, cupcakes or like a very basic cake, maybe some cookies every now and then, but um, cookies are ooh, cookies annoy me because either they're too soft or they're too crunchy. I can't get that perfect chewy consistency that everyone strives for. Um, but yeah, when I bake, is it great? Eh, not really. I'm not a great baker, I'll be honest with you. I do try, and I do. I take it seriously. I like to get good ingredients, and I like to weigh things out properly, and no shortcuts. But at the same time, I'm just, like, I'm naturally not a great person. I'll tell you what I really dislike doing is decorating. I, I don't mind at all the actual baking of the sponge or the, the, the batter or the dough or whatever. That, I don't mind. I can bung them in the oven watch them rise and I'm done but then you take them out and you have to decorate them you have to wait for it to cool down you have to get the icing ready yeah oh, you have to do it in layers wait for it to dry be really delicate I, I haven't got time for that for example if I make a cake it's something like what was the most recent one I did it was a ginger sponge cake and the reason why I did that is because you don't have to do anything you know, once it's out of the oven you let it cool down and you eat it nice and simple Maybe at a stretch I might put some lemon drizzle on top because, you know, nice contrast of flavours. But lemon drizzle, you just pour it over. Poke some holes in, pour it over, bob your uncle, done. Uh, See, so yeah, I do like baking, 
don't like decorating. Also, I don't like decorating because I always have this nice image in my head of what it's going to look like, and it never turns out like that. Never ever. I'm just too sloppy and too messy. So, oh, and also to answer your last part, moreover, is it British? Uh, I hope so inherently because I'm doing it, but uh, I, I would, I would like to try more sort of exotic baking, I suppose, different recipes um, from different countries. At the moment it is quite bog standard, simple stuff, which, yeah, is quite British, I guess. But anyway, thank you for your question, Ben. The last couple of questions we got. Let's see if I can do it in time. Uh, next one is from Superflash. What are some other YouTube channels that you watch? And also, what is your opinion on food in the cinema? Okay, well, let me quickly tab over to YouTube and I'll get up my list of subscriptions. I'm actually subscribed to quite a lot of people, but I don't watch most of them. It's kind of bad, actually. There's only a very select few that I I would click on straight away to watch. And then there'll be a few others that'll be like, eh, I could watch that later on, so I put it on the, uh, the watch later list. But let's have a little scroll down. And I'll, I'll tell you something that I do watch quite a lot. So Funhouse is a big one. Funhouse are a sort of um, gaming comedy channel. They're related to Rooster Teeth. So if you know what Rooster Teeth is, you'll probably know about Funhouse. Yeah, they're good. I'll tell you what, I'll put the links to these channels I'm going to mention in the description if you are so inclined to um, check them out. Uh, so yeah, Funhouse. Then we have people like Ace from... The, there'll be a lot of JFS people. So Ace from the JFS. Uh, Ashens who does lots of um, Poundland, like dollar store uh, reviews, and also kind of old gaming stuff he does a lot of as well. So Ashens is always a, a good one. Very, very consistent and reliable YouTuber he is. Uh, Aces380, B00100, who is actually taking a bit of a break, it seems, at the moment, but um, former Minecracker, Minecraft stuff, really. Uh, Kadikarus, I watch... A little bit of, not as much now, but he does um, video game things like reviews and top tens, and um, yeah, it's pretty good. He's doing Crash Bandicoot videos at the moment. Uh, who else is there? There's a guy called Calvin, Calvin Bond reviewer, and the the clues in the name. He does James Bond related reviews, everything James Bond. His whole channel is just James Bond, which I love, and um, he's an interesting guy. And he definitely knows his stuff, so that's where I go to for Bond-related stuff. Uh, Captain Disillusion. Oh man, this is going to take ages, actually. I watch more of these people than I, uh, <laughs> I realise. Um, Captain Disillusion does... Uh, how would I describe it? He sort of finds fake videos and shows you how they're done with CGI and stuff. Top-notch stuff. Go check him out. Uh, Cinemassacre, a.k.a. Um, James Rolfe, who does the Angry Video Game Nerd. AVGN, uh, just you know, general gaming stuff, and also lots of film stuff as well. Very good. Cow Chop, not as much, but I do like them. Sort of like Funhouse, they do gaming, funny videos, not just gaming, but um, related to Rooster Teeth. So, yep. Uh, Dennis Flux, JFS, uh, Etho, again, a former Minecracker, a bit like B00, uh, does Minecraft videos still. Um, who else is there? Fruit Fly from the JFS. Hollywood, not that he uploads anymore, but Hollywood from the JFS. Mm, Jay Sano, we were talking about him earlier. I don't watch him as much now, but I used to watch him quite a lot. Uh, who else is there that I watch a lot? Mixon when he uploads. Nakesa, Dan's on here. Oh, Pyro Puncher. I used to watch him quite a lot, or uh, a lot, not just quite a lot, but a lot. Uh, he doesn't really upload anymore, though. Oh, Red Letter Media. That is a definite one. I love Red Letter Media. Are film review people? Uh, if you've heard of the infamous um, Mr. Plinkett Phantom Menace review, they're the people behind that, and um, they just do lots of film reviews and skits, and they're just great. Really funny guys. Uh, Shawstin, Sayolo, just more JFS, the Globalizer, which is basically Asus 380's little thing he had going for a while, Merry, 
And to an extent, I still watch some of Yogg's cast stuff. They don't do anything similar to how they used to do um, videos. Like, they do a lot less Minecraft, but um, they still do good videos every now and then. So yeah, Yogg's cast as well. There are tons of others that I skipped over because either they don't upload anymore, like they're dead channels, or I just don't really find their stuff very interesting anymore. Oh, I missed one. Grand Illusions. Oh, I love Grand Illusions. It's basically just this old this old man called Tim who's been collecting toys for like 60 years and he just sits at a table and shows you his toy collection like themed around certain things like uh, uh, here are some toys all about frogs and I'll show you them. And it's just a... Oh, it's just great. Go Honestly, all these links I'll put in the description. Go check some of these people out because they're just so good. Stop watching my crappy stuff. Oh, Joda as well. I watched Joda subscribe. Sorry, Joda, I didn't want to miss you. But um, yeah, stop watching my crappy stuff and go watch these channels because half the time, well, most of the time, it's a lot, lot better. Okay, um, I, that was a long answer, but um, I hope that was useful to some of you. Uh, Super Flash's second part of that question is, what is your opinion on food in the cinema? I am not a big fan at all. I really don't like people eating in the cinema. That being said, I still do buy... This is the thing. Before I go into the cinema, I go get a, a bottle of drink. And drinking's fine, because that's not loud at all. But um, I go get a drink, and I go get some Haribo or some sort of chewy sweets. But, as soon as the film starts, I usually forget about the sweets, and I, I hardly touch them. Unless the film's really boring me. But um, yeah, I, I usually never eat when the film's actually on. <laughs> I'd usually eat most of them by the time the trailers had finished. So I just don't like people. They should just they should just make non crinkly packaging for cinema only. Wouldn't that be great? And I tell you a big thing. I I just said that people don't make sounds drinking, but if they slurp, especially with like these slush puppy things they have now in in um. In cinemas like the uh, the Tango, was it Tango Ice Blast? My goodness, I remember being in, I think it was Dunkirk, with a friend, and there was a guy, oh, I don't know, it might have been a girl, a guy or a girl, I couldn't see him, but I could definitely hear him slurping on the bottom of this drinks cup for what seemed like an eternity. It's like, for goodness sake, the drink's empty. You finished it. But they kept on going. They wanted every last droplet from that cup. No. No. None of that, please. Food in the cinema, I do think, is, is an odd thing in general. It's like, what, you can't not eat for two hours. Does the eating really make it that much more enjoyable? I just don't get it. It's the same thing with people saying, oh, I hate having to go up to the toilet. Can you really not? not go to the toilet for two hours it's not that long and maybe if you didn't drink all the drinks and eat all the food you wouldn't need to go to the toilet in the middle of the film oh you got me started ranting now here we go here we go uh i am a big hypocrite though well not myself but my friend one time <laughs> we went to go see it might have been star wars uh the force awakens when that came out my friend took in uh, might I add, to quite a small cinema, it wasn't one of these massive chain ones, it was more of an independent cinema. He took in a whole portion of fish and chips <laughs> that we just got from around the corner. And so they were fresh and hot and smelly. Because uh, he put vinegar, he put salt, he put all the, all the stuff on it. And thankfully, there weren't many people in the cinema that day. Otherwise, I would have felt really bad. But yeah, a whole portion of fish and chips. And he just unwrapped it on his lap and started eating. <laughs> I was just like, man, the cheek of this guy. Oh, Yeah, that's my opinion, though. Um, quite strong, ultimately. No food, or not much food in the cinema, please. For the love of God. Right, last question is from Weather, who asks, What is one movie that you quote the most lines from? <sighs> Ooh, what is my most quotable or quoted film? Mm. That is a tricky question. A good question, but a tricky one. What film do I quote? I tell you what film I do quote a lot from. Not as much now, because I haven't seen it in a while. But after I watch it, there's lots of things I say. And that is Shaun of the Dead. 
as soon as I watched Shaun of the Dead, I noticed things like, uh, <laughs> well, anytime I hear the word Barbara, I think of, we're coming to get you, Barbara. And also, uh, how's that for a slice of fried gold? That I do like saying, but only like, I've just really remembered that now. I usually say it a lot when I've just seen the film. Um, other films though, I don't know. I don't tend to quote much from films. It's more TV and it's more Simpsons. Obviously Simpsons is like the most quotable show in history. That or Friends maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna switch your question and say which TV show. Definitely Simpsons or Friends. Maybe Futurama to an extent. But, uh, I spe oh, I tell you what I do all the time and I don't think people get the reference. Well, they definitely don't. This is from um, Futurama. Is at one point Fry, I don't know what the context of this is now, but he goes, I'll show ye. Like he says ye. And I do that all the time. And people must think I'm a right weirdo. Well, they think that anyway, but yeah. Simpsons, Futurama, Friends, those sort of things, really. Anyway, this was a, uh, a long old rambly one, but I wanted to get all the questions done. So I am now completely out of questions, uh, which means uh, it might be a while until I do another one. Got to let them build up for a bit. So um, yeah, please do. If you feel like asking me a question, visit the link in the description box, the Google link, and leave a question, leave your name, and I will answer it probably in the next episode because I have, I've, I've none. I'm all out. Um, so yeah, please do that, and I can carry on doing these videos. Anyway, I'm going to carry on drinking this very cold coffee now, and um, yeah, and say goodbye. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.